It's nearly impossible to choose the best science from DDW. Uh, the quantity of science here is unparalleled. We have the largest GI meeting in the entire world, and so it really is the best and the largest number of abstracts. And of course, the best is always in the eye of the beholder, what you're most interested in. However, uh, today I've chosen four abstracts, one from each of our four participating societies to review for you. Each of those has general interest uh, both to physicians and to the lay public. The first uh, abstract is from the AASLD, the Liver Society, and it's about uh, transplantation in acute alcoholic hepatitis. Historically, uh, acute alcoholic hepatitis uh, was not considered an indication for liver transplantation because of the fear that patients would return to drinking. And indeed, in the past, you had to be abstinent for at least six months before you could be considered for a transplant. The problem with that is in those six months, many patients died or didn't survive. Um, so many centers now have changed that policy and are starting to transplant acute alcoholic hepatitis. It turns out that the outcomes are actually quite good, uh, matching other uh, liver diseases, uh, and this truly is a life-saving procedure for these patients. Uh, this study was a survey of many centers about what their practices were, and indeed the, the practice of transplanting these patients has grown significantly over the last 10 years, and uh, it also identified what social support was offered afterwards and, and how these patients fared, and in general, they fared very well. I think this study could uh, change the practice of the remaining transplant centers that still are not transplanting acute alcoholic hepatitis, so I think it's a very important study. The next abstract I'd like to discuss comes from the American Gastroenterology Association, and it's a study of a novel antibody, AMG714, uh, which is an anti-IL-15 antibody uh, that ameliorates the effect of gluten uh, in patients who inadvertently uh, ingest gluten and yet have known celiac sprue. One of the difficulties with the disease of celiac sprue is that even when patients are very strict with their diet, and most of them know that they have to be, it's very hard to not get inadvertent gluten. And in, Indeed, inadvertent gluten intake uh, is documented in at least 50% of the patients who believe they're following a strict diet. Partly that's because of the tendency to eat out, and even when you, when you do eat out, even when you get a gluten-free meal, you're never guaranteed that everything there is gluten-free, uh, such as the cutting boards and the fry pans, etc. So it can be very difficult, um, and that can cause significant symptoms in these patients. This antibody is, uh, will never allow uh, celiac sprue patients to go out and have a bread meal. That's not the idea. The idea is that if they go into a restaurant, they're going to order a gluten-free meal, but they're not 100% sure they trust that, they could take this pill if it ever gets uh, you know, allowed here in the United States and perhaps have less side effects. So I think that's a, a great idea for patients suffering from celiac sprue. Celiac sprue is a very common diagnosis. The next abstract I'd like to discuss is from the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. Uh, it's uh, an abstract about a methylene blue uh, pill that you can take with the colonoscopy preparation that stains the colon and in doing so achieves what we call chromoendoscopy, which may increase our yield of detecting polyps. So adenoma detection rate, which is a very important measure of colonoscopy quality because it means how well we detect polyps in the colon. And this study was shown to be increased by 9%, which is very significant, a 9% increase um, when you took this tablet with the preparation for the colon. This was a multi-center uh, international randomized trial, so it was a strong study, and it, this is a very safe thing to do, and it seemed very simple. Much simpler than spraying methylene blue during the colonoscopy, which currently is the only method we have for chromoendoscopy. So I think this is a very exciting study. Uh, the last abstract I'd like to talk about comes from the uh, Surgical Society, the SSAT, and it's about a cancer vaccine that's being used to treat advanced colorectal cancer, metastatic advanced colorectal cancer. Uh, currently, we, we don't have any good immunotherapies for uh, advanced colorectal cancer, uh, and that's desperately needed because these patients um, would like to live longer and immune therapy and other cancers has really achieved that and we don't have that yet. Um, this is a exciting study that actually is a mouse study, uh, although the subsequent study is going to be a human phase one trial. 
The mouse study was uh, mice that have um, stimulated cancer development and then are given this vaccine and indeed it was shown to markedly prolong their life. So it's quite promising study. Uh, the, the planned human study, phase one study, uh, will determine the safety of the, the vaccine, but if it works, I think it will be very exciting um, as a treatment that we really don't have now, a salvage treatment for incurable colon cancer. As always, uh, the science at, at DDW this year is outstanding and exciting and uh, offers much promise for the future for our patients and for changing our practices. So I'm delighted to be here and I'm sure that all the other attendees are also.